Hello everyone and welcome back to another Universe Sandbox 2 and actually welcome to the first video of 2018 as well actually it's been a few days since I uploaded so apologies for that I was just taking a bit of time off I guess I've just been quite tired recently so yeah there's that but anyways today what we're doing is we're going to do what um well, actually sort of like a little sort of continuation of when we made those last few custom objects because if you remember I made a star here called Cypher as which is actually one of the stars you guys uh, requested me to do. And this thing has 1 billion luminosity. So we're going to go and place this guy in our solar system. And we're going to see the destruction that it causes. So without further ado, let's get into this. So let's go ahead and do this. And also hopefully you guys enjoyed the 200, or the, not 200, 2000 subscriber special as well. Because yeah, it was quite a fun video um, to build actually. so Or to, to make, sorry. So yeah. Hopefully you enjoyed that, and maybe we can try and get to, uh, I don't know, 10,000 this year. That, that, that'd that be cool, but I don't know, could we do it? That'd be pretty sweet. Anyways, what we need to do next is we need to, yeah, select all the objects in the system, like so. We need to auto-orbit, so they should all orbit around the star now. So, well, uh, they probably won't orbit for long, because 1 billion luminosity, this is pretty powerful stuff. So, if we just go to the Hathwell zone quickly, then we zoom out. Look at this. That is completely insane. So if you remember when I made this star, this star, to get even get into the red zone of the Hattable zone, you need to be about, mm, about 9, 10 light years away. The green zone is about 50, 40, 50 light years. That is how bright this guy is. This, If this was um, Alpha Centauri, this would affect our solar system. We should do that, actually. Maybe I can make another video on it. If we, if this was Alpha Centauri, what damage it would do to our system. Tell me if you guys want that, because that could be pretty cool. But today, we're going to be seeing what happens when it roasts our solar system. So we're going to go ahead and slow down time, because we are really going to need to have this slow down. So let's have it about real time. So, yeah, almost a second. So let's go to Mercury, since it's the closest. Hit play. Look at that temperature. It's losing mass. Its radius is going down. The temperature is at 70 thousand degrees look at this it is literally just vaporizing instantly that is just how insane this star is wow that is crazy and i'm guessing venus is going to be even worse let's have a look oh no only thirty-three thousand. okay it has its atmosphere is completely gone earth uh, okay earth i don't know how you are alive so we're going to turn off climate mode and then hit play because that does usually fix it yep now it's at fifty thousand. Okay, that's what that's what it should be at. i don't know why it was yeah, I don't know why it was still normal. The, ha the climate mode needs a bit of fixing, I think, because, yeah, that definitely isn't right if Earth can survive. But I don't know, what's up with it? A little buggy with the Earth right now. Um, Mars, same thing here as well, losing mass. Look at the mass go down, wow. That's Mercury as well. Yeah, well, Mercury's losing tons. Venus? Yeah, Venus is going down. Sirius, how are you? Okay, not too bad here. Jupiter, where's Jupiter at? So Jupiter's starting to heat up in temperature. 19,000 at Jupiter, that, that's pretty mad. Anyways, let's go back to Earth. Now, let's start to speed this up. Let's see what happens here. Ooh. Oh, here we go. And as you can see, the asteroid belts have just vaporized. I think the only one left is Ceres now, and I'm guessing Ceres is going to be very, very small. In the yeah, look how small Ceres is. Can't even, I can't even zoom in there anymore. Right. Oh, there we go. Is that wow, it really does want me to zoom in. But yeah, there's Ceres, so I don't know how big it is, but... I'm guessing it's not very big at all, so let's just um, try and find it down here. Just look at this. The whole system, apart from Planet 9, is um, pretty much um, going to go down here. So, wow, look at all this. There's series there. So can we select series? Get game, let us, please. Okay, we can't select series, but as you can see, it's smaller than all of these guys. So Sedna, so yeah, series is very, very small now. Wow, look at all this. That's pretty, pretty crazy stuff. So let's keep going now. And let's um, do this. So if you guys remember the episode where we replaced the sun with the brightest known star, it pretty much killed everything. This guy is even brighter than that. So this should um, should be a pretty big screen cleaning for um, this star. And as you can see, the whole inner solar system is now vaporized. And it's only been literally maybe a few hours since we hit play. I know it says 36 years, but this simulation's already started ahead. So that's pretty crazy stuff. But wow, that is ridiculously insane so let's see what the gas giants are doing now are these guys going to start losing us so we need to speed up time here because the gas giants actually do need time to vaporize a bit more but 
Uranus, how are you? Okay, are you gonna you gonna go down? It does take a while to get rid of these guys, but as we can see here, Saturn is falling victim to this start. Look, it's losing mass, losing radius. See Jupiter. Jupiter's lost a bit of mass, I want to say, as well. Wait, 315 Earths. Is that how much Jupiter normally is? Uh, 318 Earths. So, yeah, it's losing mass. Jupiter, even Jupiter is. Um, Uranus. I think Uranus and Neptune are going to go down. It doesn't look like they've gone down yet. Jupiter and Saturn. Look at the massive trails they're shooting out into space of the loss of material. Pretty crazy stuff. Even Sedna. Even Sedna is in a very hot temperature. What about Planet 9? Planet 9? Yeah, even Planet 9. 2018. Oh, 2018. Well, yeah, 2018 degrees here. So, even Planet 9 from its extremely far distance is still no match for the or the luminosity as of this star. Like, just look at that value. That is just absolutely insane. So, let's go back to Jupiter here. And let's just see if it's going to get finished off. Because these dwarf planets should just vaporize as well. There's no way these are going to survive. Yeah, look, you can see here. They're just, they're, these are just going to slowly disappear. Like, we've got Make May, Kyrus. Yeah, these are going down. Pluto as well. Yeah, you're, you're the wow, Pluto's got a lot smaller. Okay, so now we just have to play the waiting game and just see. The more the objects vaporize, the quicker the simulation runs. And it looks like Saturn and Uranus are gone now. So, they've gone. Jupiter as well, I think, is um, on its last few legs as well. Oh, look at Jupiter. 14.8 kilometers, and it's gone. So, Jupiter... Over 318 masses of Earth have completely vaporized from that, which is just, wow, that is insane. Pluto. So Neptune's the last of the gas giants. Neptune's surprisingly holding up well. That's pretty interesting. I don't see how it should, it shouldn't be holding up. It should be going down like these guys are, and they're further away. So interesting stuff from Neptune there. I don't know why it's still alive, but I think that should be gone. Because from the last time when we added the star that was less bright, it did vaporize it, so... Interesting. Anyways, let's keep going here. So we're traveling at about a year or 1.4 years now of time. And there's not many dwarf planets left. So we've still got Sedna, since that's one of the furthest away. Iris as well. Even Pluto is just holding in there, but it's not going to last much longer, as we can see. Iris has just gone. These guys are still going down. That one looks all right, though. This one's not really going down much. And Sedna as well. Is it losing mass? It, look, it must be, yes. You can see the trail behind it. Whoa, look at all the mass from Sedna here. That's, that's quite a lot of them. Um, it's not really m much in moons, but in kilograms. That is, that's quite a lot. What about total mass loss? So yeah, that, the mass loss on Sedna is going up. So it may take a while, but this guy is probably going to get smaller. This one as well. Yeah, that's also losing mass. So it's pretty obvious. Neptune, though. How is Neptune holding on here? Very interesting. And Planet 9 must be completely fine. Like, I don't see Planet 9 losing mass anytime soon. Apparently, it is losing mass, but... Mm, that's pretty weird. So it's barely lost anything though, so Planet Iron is definitely out of harm's way for now. But Neptune, how is Neptune holding up? Look at this. This is this is very strange. Has it lost even a moon yet? No, it doesn't look like it. Yeah, it hasn't even lost the moon, but it is going up. So we're just gonna have to keep going as fast as it let us, pretty much. I'm guessing this thing's gonna run out soon. The same with Sedna. It may take a while, but they probably should go eventually. So let's just go into simulation settings here. Let's turn this off. So it's just so it can run a little quicker. Because I want to see these objects just turn into nothing. There we go. Let's try that. So anything from Neptune? It really doesn't want to um, vaporize. This one as well. And now we can see some progress. Look at that. And then Sedna as well. How are you doing? Sedna's still holding up. So it's... 72% of the light it reflects. Let me just check that, because that could be wrong since it is a custom object. I haven't checked up on the custom setter in ages, so just bear with me as I attempt to find it, which is on... There it is. So let's just get a basic one. Apparently it doesn't reflect any light. Well, I guess that makes sense since it's in darkness. So going by the settings of what the game gives it, we're going to go ahead and do exactly how the game puts it. Now Sender this should start to vaporise. Yeah, that's what should be happening, I'm guessing, because... I don't think we can really um, predict how much it reflects since I don't think Sedna actually receives any light um, in real life or like in reality. So it would make sense if we put it the way the game has it. So yeah, Sedna is now going to go down. See, this one is almost yeah that was going down. But Neptune, how is Neptune holding up here? Like it's lost over 1.6 moons, but it's still taking forever. And then Planet Nine, you are going to be completely fine. Yep, Planet Nine. Barely lost anything, as we can see in total mass loss here. Or mass loss total. Yeah, nothing's happening. So, 
It's only the dwarf planets right now which are really struggling. So, yeah, these are just going to eventually just go, as you can see here. You can see the elements are all changing as well as it. All of the silica is getting burnt away. The iron core is the only thing that's left. And then the iron core is just going to vaporize once all of that silica rock's gone, pretty much. So, we can see more and more silica is just disappearing from the object. And once it all goes, the iron core is just going to vaporize very quickly as well. As you can see, it's just iron and it's gone. And Sedna, same thing with you, I'm guessing, as well. Yeah, no, oh, there's no iron on Sedna on this one, so it's all just silica. So, same with this. It's just going to completely disappear into nothing. So, let's see here. Oh, my God. This is mad. So, let's um, just wait. It may take a while, but it's going to go eventually. Then Neptune, I don't know how Neptune is surviving. It's, I think that's the same value it normally is. It's usually a little bigger than that. We'll, we'll have to compare it after, so... Yeah, poor old Sedna. Even Sedna can't hold out to the star, which is pretty crazy, honestly. Because Sedna is usually one of the survivors. Like, this thing can usually survive supernovas, but... Damn. And then the Planet 9 as well. Yeah, you, you always survive. Well, usually. It's getting colder here. Look at that. So, Sedna's completely gone now. So, all that's left is the two gas giants. So, it's Neptune and Planet 9. So, pretty crazy stuff. So, now what we're going to have to do is, I'm guessing we're going to have to just speed it up as fast as we can do it. Just to see if Neptune actually eventually goes down. Because I think that's the last thing we want to see here. So, Neptune, Neptune, Neptune. Oh, I want my gun. No, let's turn that down. There we go. So, we're going to even faster now. If we um, play with this menu a bit. Still nothing. Okay. So, it's, it says it's losing mass here, but it's just not losing it quick enough. Like, we may just have to leave this running for a bit. Like... Or what if we just manually make it smaller? Like, we could try that, but let's just um, go to Neptune first, just to compare it with the original, or like, what ne the original Neptune here, so... Yeah, the settings are exactly the same, pretty much, so... Apparently Neptune doesn't want to go out. But we will add another Neptune in, just to see if it's the one in this system, which is a little weird, so let's just add a Neptune from scratch. Is that going to get affected in any way? Just look at this one. Oh yeah, this one's going down. Okay, maybe it's just the, the one that is already in the simulation is a little bugged. So we're just going to go ahead and delete that. And we'll just roll with this Neptune. So it seems like this one is actually going down. So, good to know. So now we just have to keep going until it eventually just turns into nothingness. Because even, even now it's working, it may take a while for all this mass to completely go. So, yeah. Um, but as we do know, Neptune is more resistant to... Um, or like Novas and bright stars compared to Uranus's, so it would make sense that it does last longer, but Jupiter and Saturn were taken out, no problem, so very, very peculiar how Neptune's managed to hold on as the last object apart from Planet Nine, because Planet Nine is just, yeah, this thing is just new, losing absolutely no mass whatsoever, hardly, so Neptune, just take it away, and we'll just have to keep <laughs> seeing what happens, I guess we can speed it up a little bit more, and that's literally the fastest we can run this now, so that is insane. Actually, what we're going to do is we're just going to go and save this simulation quick just to see if it will let us do it any quicker when we reopen it. So, let's go all the way up here. It should be around here somewhere. Alright. Oh, God, there's a lot of stuff. Is it? It's not that one. Which one is it? Oh, there it is. Alright. So, right. Oh, now we're traveling it millions of years. Whoa, I don't know if I want to do that. So, let's slow it all down just a few hundred years. Hit play. Okay, so just so we can um, just keep track of what's going on. Now we'll speed it up. So... It really can't run any faster than that. Seriously? It ran faster earlier. What if we just... Oh, it's because this reset. Okay, so let's turn that off. Now let's watch magic happen. Okay, so... We are travelling uh, very quick right now. So let's just um, keep an eye out. So this is the fastest it will go. So let's just um, keep an eye on Neptune. So now we just have to watch as that number slowly deteriorates down. Because I think that's the only way we're going to get Neptune completely vaporised. Is just by doing this, but... As you can see, it is going down, so we're going to manually move it to 5,000, just so we can just watch it happen a quick quicker, and there you go. So, Neptune wouldn't survive. Like, it would have taken forever to get to 5,000, but eventually when it did get to 5,000, it just it just goes. So, that only leaves one. Planet 9, is this even going to, like, nothing is happening here. So, I guess we could try this, like, make it as fast as, like, we literally can't go any quicker than this. So... Anything at all, like, Moon is literally losing nothing. Mass loss, still losing absolutely nothing. So, what if we put this to 5,000 in radius? Does that make it vaporize any quicker? Whoa, what the heck happened here? Apparently, Planet 9 just got ejected. 
completely. Okay, that is very strange why it's done that. But Planet Nine is not even a gas giant, so pretty, pretty weird stuff. So that's just a rocky planet. Okay, I guess we'll try that again though. So we'll just go back into the solar system here. So da -da -da, solar system, solar system. Actually, let's just go into the um, just go into the normal system. See if we get any different results. So let's just go to solar system with Planet Nine. So there we go. Now, okay. So it's some interesting information there if you want to read it. So Planet 9 is all about here, and it's one of those boring ones, not like the cool custom one I have. So we just got a random Planet 9. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and delete the sun again. Then we are going to put the superstar back in. So Cypher, we're going to place you there. Then we're going to go tools, all, and then all to orbit. Hit play. The inner solar system will go. So we really want to keep track of Planet 9 here. So just um, to speed things up, we'll just go ahead and delete all these. Because they all vaporized previously, so we don't need to care about them. So, come on, please delete, get out of here. There we go, so it's going to speed up quicker and quicker and quicker, which is what we want. Let's just go ahead and manually delete all those. And there we go. So let's just delete all particles. Now, Planet 9, let's put you on your closest point to the sun. So, oh, no, it's always like this now, okay. So, anything going to happen? Or is it literally just going to play out forever? Like, if we put you to 5,000 again, is it going to vaporize? Well, it's hot in temperature, but... Oh, it's going to go down. Okay. I just saw that. So, it is deteriorating. So, it is going down, but from the way it's acting, even though this star is a billion luminosity, it would still take a very, very long time for Planet 9 to eventually go down. Because, remember, Nept even Neptune took a while, so we had to manually speed it up. But Planet 9, this was barely losing anything when it was at full mass. So, it looks like the only way to do this is to speed it up manually and make its um, radius smaller. And then... As it gets smaller and smaller, it starts to speed up in its mass and radius loss. As you can see here, it's starting to speed up a lot quicker. So we're going to go ahead and um, speed up again using this setting. So as we can see here, Planet 9, even from this distance, which is 1000 AU, is no match for this star. Because last time when we had the brightest star in the system, we had to move Planet 9 closer for it to completely vaporize, I think. But it looks like today, Planet 9 is just going to go naturally. So... We just have to um, keep doing this, I guess, just so it speeds up. So now, come on, as fast as you can. So it's going into the non or the hundreds now. So goodbye, a thousands. It's going into the hundreds any second now. So there we go. It's going to continually speed up quicker and quicker and quicker until it vaporizes into absolutely nothing. So as you can see here, we'll speed it up. It's good. It's look how many laps it's doing around the star, and, and then it's gone. So it took two thousand years. Even with um, us helping Planet Nine to completely get rid of it. So we're now in the year 5,600. So pretty crazy stuff. But yeah, that is what happens if we put a star with 1 billion luminosity here in the solar system. So basically, all hell breaks loose. This thing is an absolute killer. Like, this is the most dangerous star in the whole game that we have. Or in my game anyway, because I'm guessing other people who have the game probably made something brighter than this. But... Yeah, this is the brightest star I have in the game. Like, we put any object near it. These are just... These will vaporize pretty... Very, very quickly. So... Whoa. No, no, I don't want to delete a user object. No, no, no. No, thank you. So, if we just put a few of these... Look, 55 crown cry we made the other day. Look, they're just completely gone. Like, this gas giant here... I don't know how it's surviving from Star Wars, but... How is this surviving? What the heck? Is it... Oh, it's because of that option. That's how it should be. So, it's just because it reflects all the light it receives. That's the only reason why it wasn't working. So... Yeah, these, these wouldn't hold out either, which is just insane, like, damn. So the only way to survive this star is to have it reflect in all of the light it receives, it looks like, because it seems like that's the only way. So, yeah, do not make stars like this. They destroy everything, so... Could be interesting to make a solar system around this, though, so... Yeah, um, tell me if you want me to do that. Or, and also tell me if you want me to put this in where Alpha Centauri is, see if it will do anything to our system. But yeah, that does it for today's episode, guys. So hopefully you all enjoyed. Make sure you did hit that like button. Subscribe and help us on the journey to 3,000, I guess, to see if we can get that before spring, because that would be pretty cool. But yeah, I think that's, we don't need to do any subscriber goals for a while. So, so we hit our goal of 2,000 before the end of the year, so I'm very happy with that. And anyways, um, many, many thanks to you again as well, guys, because we wouldn't be here without you. And yeah. So, if you've got any ideas for another video, feel free to leave them down below, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.